You know, what we paired this uh, Cabernet Sauvignon with is something that is one of my favorite dishes, and that is braised short ribs. I happen to think that's one of the best dishes from the beef that you can get, if you know what I mean, other than steaks, of course, which is typical. But what I wanted to talk about is braising, because braising is a technique of cooking that a lot of people aren't, you know, they probably do it, but they aren't familiar that it's called braising, and they're not real sure how to do it, so they do it the way grandma did it or the way their mother did it or something like that. And I just want to tell you uh, the best way to do it, and then you can adjust if you need to adjust or reassure yourself you're right on. If you have a large piece of meat, let's just say uh, uh, a roast, a beef roast, and you're, gonna, you're going to braise it. You don't put the vegetables in to start with. You generally put something like maybe onions and garlic, and that's it. Salt and pepper on the roast itself. Put it right on top of the onions and the garlic. Turn your oven on, let's say, 350. And then take a wine or water, uh, wine, <laughs> <laughs> and, and pour the wine until it gets up just about, not quite, halfway up the roast. And then put it on the... Uh, in the oven or put it on the stove on, on medium heat, put the lid on and just let her rip, if you will, for a couple, three hours, depending on the size of the meat. But 350 is typical. Uh, if you want it real tender, you might want to turn it down to 325, which is be what we call a low heat oven. And it'll take a little longer to cook, but it'll be more tender. You turn it up to 375 because you're in a hurry, it'll cook quicker, but it won't be as tender. Okay, so that's kind of the way to keep that in mind. But you start out with the liquid about halfway up whatever the meat is, all right? And then maybe an hour before you know it's going to be finished, that's when you would add the potatoes and the carrots and so on so that they'll get done just in time when the roast gets done but not done an hour and a half before you finally take it out, <laughs> if you know what I mean, it overkill. You know, so um, that's, the, that's the best way uh, to do it, and that's what braising is all about. And short ribs, and boy, you can buy them in any, any store that sells beef has got short ribs because it is popular. And because it's popular, the price has gone up, which is a shame because this is not a tender piece of meat normally. You have to slow cook it for a period of time. But the chef here, Chef Darren, has taken a little bit of honey and a little bit of mustard and made the sauce uh, out of that, along with some of the juice, if you will, from uh, the, the uh, braising, and put that on top. Now, just before he put it on the, the plate, he put a little bit of that mustard uh, sauce on, and then he put a little patty of butter on top of that. And that patty of butter melted. And when you first got it, <laughs> you could taste that butter and that beef and that sauce, and you thought, holy cow, this is wonderful. Did you not? Did you realize it was butter? You probably didn't, but I can tell you, that's a trick you can do at home. If you take a steak off the grill, put a little patty of butter right on top of it if you don't have a sauce. If you have a sauce, put the sauce on it, and then put a patty of butter on top of that. <laughs> now, now, I don't mean the bigger is not better, you know, when it comes to not a big, thicker piece of butter and so on and so forth. Just enough butter that's going to melt right on top of that steak. And let me tell you, the flavor of the butter is what we grew up loving. You're not putting a half a pound in there, so you're not going to say, oh my God, I'm going to wear it because I'm going to eat it. Uh, but the fact is that a little bit of butter on the top is going to add the flavor, which is what you want it to do. And that's what it's all about, you know. So uh, the, the chef has done good. Now, in addition to uh, this beautiful piece of meat here, I think, and I, maybe I mentioned before we went to break, but rack of lamb is killer with Cabernet Sauvignon. Chocolate chip cookies and Cabernet are good. Uh, there's a lot that's very good. Okay, we're, we're running out of time, I'm sorry to say. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for listening to Wines Is Your, America's number one wine syndicated radio and television show. I want to thank Roy's Hawaiian Restaurant for all their work today, the Plum Wine and the Columbia Crest Wines, uh, my broadcast engineer, Jeremy Knight, Carl Magno, V Asian TV, Definition uh, TV uh, for making Cox Cable, Direct TV, and all of the Asia areas happen. Thanks for choosing and listening to Wines Azure from the left coast and the east coast and from all around the world on the internet. I'm Les Kincaid. Good night, everybody.
Thanks for watching Wine Du Jour. Had a great time here at Roy's Hawaiian Cuisine in Summerlin. That would be just west of Las Vegas proper. Three wines were good. The pairings are absolutely outstanding. And Chef Darren did a good, good job. TJ Seeker is the manager here. If you're coming to town for lunch or for dinner, Roy's Hawaiian Cuisine is the one to go do. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll be back next time, right here at the same time.